Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? This is SDL0320 representing JVS. I'm back here again for another review for Arrow. This is the what episode? Oh my gosh. I think this is the 12th episode. Bratva. Um, be quite honest with you guys. Um, I did not expect anything from this episode. I didn't think it was going to be compelling. I didn't think it was going to be anything. I, I looked at the preview, and the preview kind of just like had like, like Oliver getting hit by the dude that was from the flashbacks, and I was like, what is this going to be? But then you get this interesting arc of people that have been changed, um, specifically with Felicity and John Diggle. Uh, Felicity is taking this very dark turn. And I think she might be seduced by it because she doesn't have anybody else. Like, Oliver is not in her life, really, uh, like he was. And in addition to that, like, she's already come from darkness, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that scene with her, Ragman, and um, Mr. Terrific, you know, in the club, and her, like, being just so dark, I was just like, yo, Felicity. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's intriguing for, as far as her character development. I think it's very intriguing. And then, even with Dickel, you know, like, uh, Oliver was already doing some, you know, some dark stuff to try to, you know, interrogate. And Dickel was like, that's just not enough. He's just wearing this dude out, you know what I'm saying? And I think from a tonal standpoint, that is the edge that Arrow needs to maintain itself to give some kind of semblance of what the first two seasons were. The first season of Arrow, you know what I'm saying, Oliver was afraid to kill anybody. He could use a killing machine, to be quite honest with you. It wasn't until what, the end of the season that he became more tame about, you know, less killing and more justice. Um, and, and from that standpoint, it's like recounting all the things that he brought into because you get scenes with, you know, with him with Talia and he's just as relentless as what I remember from the first season. So I think from a tonal standpoint, this is a really good episode because it's very dark, you know, and it's weird because now Oliver is a lot more of the light. Like, it's, it's strange because everybody around him now is gravitated towards levels of darkness. And, and another thing which is really interesting to me is the fact that Ragman, dude, he had this one sequence with that nuke. I was like, Ragman, you are being underused, my friend. You need to be with the legends. You need to go with them or find the Justice League or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are being underutilized. I was sitting there watching some of the stuff he was uh, capable of doing. And, I mean, I know for a fact his costume's going to be okay. But, I don't know. I was just like, dude, this dude's being underused. And, of course, you know what I'm saying? I think everything with um, the choreography for Arrow has always been impeccable. It's always been action-packed. Uh, it's just now they're going to different locations, and it's just really awesome. The fact that um, Oliver's sister hasn't been even in the the looking, and you know, saying Arsenal hasn't even been here, and they're still able to keep really riveting, cap captivating characters. Even when I thought about Wild Dog, you know, what I'm saying like Wild Dog, I knew the dude Rick uh, Gonzalez, and I remember it was that um, illegal tender, Coach Carter. Uh, I, Mr. Robot, like the dude, he's been in a lot of different movies. And at this point, you know what I'm saying, like he's actually got some really good emotional range. And I felt like he was being underutilized before up until this episode. This episode, I was like watching him, you know what I'm saying, with Detective Lance or whatever uh, ranking he is now. I was just like, this is a really good sequence. Even with um, Oliver and Tina or, or Dinah. Like, her complimenting Oliver on, you know, who he is and not kind of just like backing down. And that is what the embodiment of, you know what I'm saying, a real black canary is supposed to be for Green Arrow. Like, I was like, and then on top of that, who Arrow's, I mean, well, who Oliver is dating, I mean, she's got some other things going on. So it's, it's really interesting that this girl Tina, like, in within maybe two or three episodes, right? Like, I'm really, like, on board with her being, you know what I'm saying, a new Black Canary. Like, I, I actually like her. I, I like her character. I like, you know, how different she really is and the edge that she's got to herself. And even with the unexploration of what she's capable of as far as her powers, like, dude, this might actually be pretty legit before it's over with. They give her the fishnets and they give her the everything. Like, dude, that's, they got a winner. They got a win as far as I'm concerned. This was actually a really good episode, and I'm curious to see what's going to happen now with the Rafa situation with the the Russians 
and the connections and then what Talia is bringing Oliver to. How did Oliver get back on the island? Because that's a whole nother thing. But uh, I guess episode 9.5 out of 10, I actually really enjoyed it, surprisingly. Um, and I didn't expect to. I, I, it's some really good performances, really good dialogue, really good development of characters, and it's a progression moving forward. And they didn't even have to use um, Prometheus in this episode. They didn't have to use the person that kind of turn their back on them, you know what I'm saying? So, from that stand, from that alone, I thought they did a really good job with this. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Keep it locked. JVS Swing will stop. Peace, everybody.